Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and welcome to week 19 of the Stash Buster block series and today's block is called Old Maid Puzzle and this is it. It's made with lots of half square triangles in two different sizes and a couple of plain squares. So I'm going to adjust the camera and show you how to put this block together. I think this old maid's block is really interesting. It has a lot of movement in it because the pieces are oriented in different directions. Um, so this is one that I really do enjoy. Um, we're going to have two separate units that we're making here. We've got this unit here and this one here. And this is a four patch. And this block I made in an eight inch square, but you can also make this in a 12 inch. Okay, for these big triangles, you're going to need one piece that is four and seven eighths inch square, and then you're going to cut it on the diagonal to give yourself two triangles. So we have those. For the dark, you're going to need two pieces that are two and seven eighths of an inch square. For the other dark, which I used this red here, this is also two and seven eighths of an inch. Okay, for the white, you're going to cut five squares that are two and seven eighths of an inch square. And then you're going to take two of those and you're going to do like you did with the big triangle and you're going to cut them in half so that you have four triangles. And those triangles are going to go here in these places. So that's where those go. And then you need four two and a half inch squares. We're going to start on these units first and we'll need our two dark purple squares that are two and seven eighths and then we need two white pieces that are two and seven eighths and then we're going to need four two and a half inch squares. So these are the pieces we're going to work on. First thing we're going to do is draw a diagonal line on the white two and seven eighths inch pieces. So I'm going to take a ruler and a pencil and draw a line. It just needs to be dark enough that I can see it. And draw that on the wrong side of your fabric. Since this is a white woven fabric, there's no right or wrong side. Okay, now I'm going to match those up to my purple squares and I need to find the right side and we're going to place those right sides together and next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch a quarter inch away on both sides of these lines. So we're going to go to the sewing machine next. Okay so I'm just going to lay my the right side of my presser foot along that line and I have a quarter inch presser foot on and I'm just going to stitch. And I'm just going to swing it around to give myself a little slack here in my thread. And stitch the other side. And then I'll do the other piece. And you can chain piece these together if you want. I do sometimes and sometimes I don't. It just depends on how I'm feeling at the moment. to cut these on the drawn line. So that'll give me two half square triangles. Okay, now I'm gonna go to press them open. Okay, I have pressed my seams towards the dark fabric and now I'm ready to lay out this block. So I'm going to just start with a white square and a half square triangle and then 
the next half square triangle and another white square and just have to make sure I have my colored fabric facing each other so that is the unit that I need to make and I'll just lay out two of those and then we'll sew these together in rows and then sew the rows together. So here are the pieces for the top row of the first unit. And then here are the other two pieces. Just have to make sure I am lining them up the way they're laid out and then we'll, I'm going to go ahead and do the other unit and get those pieces sewn together and then here are the last two pieces Okay, I'm going to leave the units chained together in their own unit and then I'm going to lay them out again and press them and then we'll sew them together. Okay, here's the first unit and I just need to make sure my triangles are facing in the opposite direction. And make sure I did not get them twisted. Um, when I'm doing a half square triangle, I like to to press away from it so that I can see my stitching in the back and that just makes it easier when I sew this unit onto another unit. So now we need to sew along these lines here. So I'm going to do this one first. And I don't have any points I have to match, I just need to nest my seams together. Okay, I sewed these two units together. And sorry, I don't have video of that. I thought I had adjusted the camera and I wound up not having that done. So, okay, now I wanna press these and I just need to press it to one side. And it does not matter which side. Okay. So these two units are going to go opposite each other like that. But I'm going to set these aside at the moment and we're going to work on this unit here. So I have these large triangles and they are a hand dyed fabric and I um, don't see much difference between one side or the other on that piece. But anyway, we're going to lay these out and the first thing I need to do is work on this section here so that means I need to do the half square triangle here so I'm going to draw my line on my background fabric and then meet right sides together and stitch a quarter inch away on both sides so we're going to do that and just turn it around and stitch the other side And then just like all my other half square triangles, I need to cut this apart. And then I'm gonna to press towards the dark. So I'm gonna lay my dark sides up. And then press it open. And I am going to go ahead and trim off my corners. I 
so I don't have to mess with them. And I'm just going to follow this layout here. I have my half square triangles and now these units, the uh, triangles that you cut from your background need to go this direction like this and you want to line up the square the right angle to the corner of your half square triangles so you're going to have some extra overlapping here and that's what you want you want that to do that because that will give you your uh, quarter inch seam allowance there so I'm going to fold this one over stitch this and then I'm going to press it open and then align this one and sew it there. So let's go ahead and do this one first. When you finish with this section of the unit, it'll be a triangle. So we're going to sew this one. And what it will look like is this. So you have this weird little unit here and I'm going to go ahead and press this open and I'm going to press it this direction. I'm going to press it away from the half square triangle. So this will be pressing it towards the dark fabric but um, it goes together better that way. So I'm going to go ahead and press that and then I'm going to lay it out so I can make sure I get my pieces together the right direction. And now this piece is going to go here and I want to sew that. So I have it set like this. So when you align this like this, you have a triangle now. So we're going to sew that one on. Just line up the raw edges. Okay, so we have this, and then I'm going to press this triangle open. And so now we have a triangle unit, and then I'm going to trim these off here. And I'm just going to trim those off flush with the raw edge of the triangle, so just like that. So you, what you want is a quarter inch of space between the point of this triangle here and the edge. So we have that. So this unit is ready to go. So now we're going to sew the other unit together and do the same thing. And be careful as you've got this whole edge is on the bias now. So it's stretchy. So you need to be careful of that. Trim off those. Okay, so now we're ready to add these triangles. And they should measure the same. So we're going to do this. Now what I want to watch for, I'm going to sew these with the purple triangle on the bottom because I want to see the stitching here. And what I'm wanting to do is when I'm sewing my seam, I want to go just right, either right on that intersection or just a hair above it. I don't want to go below it or too high above it. So I want to see that so I can kind of go right through that intersection. So we'll just line these up and just be careful because now you've got two biased edges because this edge is bias and this edge is bias. So you don't want to stretch those. So let's go sew these together. Okay, I can see my stitching line. And I'm going to adjust as I need to. And I'd like to stay on the seam side of it instead of on the inside of it if I can. We'll see how this works.
okay that worked pretty good so you can still see the point so we're doing good there so let me sew the other one just line up raw edges again pretty good too. So let's go press these and then we can start putting the block together. And I'm going to press these towards the big triangle. And do the same with this one. And being careful again of that bias there. And I'm going to trim off my corners, or my dog ears, not my corners. Okay, now we're going to lay the block out. So we want the two big triangles facing each other, like that. And then we want the white part of the half square triangles facing each other. So there we have the blocks. Now I just need to sew these two units together, these two units together, and then sew the two rows together. Okay, so here's the first two units of the first row. And then here is the second row. press these rows open and I'm going to press towards the large triangle again. Make sure I have my seam butted together there. Now on this point I can see the intersection. edges. And we'll see how that worked. Okay. Well, not too bad. Here we go. So let's go ahead and press this one open. Here we go. Okay, this unit is, this block is a little bit more challenging than the other blocks that we've done because we've got, um, this unit here is different. Um, it's not straightforward. You have several steps in that, but it isn't too difficult. So um, once you break it down into individual steps, it's, it's a lot easier to do. So I hope you'll give this block a try. Here are my four old maids blocks and here they are all oriented in the same direction. So I have all of these units going in one direction, all these units going in another direction. Now if I wanted to turn them so that I have, have them going out into the corners, you get a little bit of a different look. So I think that's kind of interesting. Um, you can It's a little bit different. I'm trying. I'm trying to look at my screen to see how different that is. I can't. I can't really tell. 
it is a little bit different. Um, what if we put all of these in the center? And then we have that look. So it is a little bit different too. So just, if you make a bunch of these blocks, just try um, laying them out in different um, layouts and see what you like. Um, you know, this here we have a star. We've got an eight-pointed star here. And then in here, you know, we've got a, a larger space here for some quilting. And, you know, this would just kind of repeat all over your, your um, quilt. So I think it's really interesting of the different things that you can get by turning these blocks in different directions. So this one is just a completely different layout. So just play with your blocks and uh, find a layout that you like the best. I hope you enjoyed this video on the Old Maid's Puzzle Block and I hope you will join me again next week for block number 20. And if you like this video, please click the like button and don't forget to click the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already and click that notification bell so you'll be notified when the next video comes up. The written instructions for this block are on my blog and you can click the link in the description box below to get those. They're in a PDF file. You can also follow me on Instagram at Sunrise Quilt Studio. And uh, I hope you all are staying safe and staying healthy and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.